<laughs> hey, good afternoon here. Tom Stewart. I'm with Liz Trotter. This is Smart Business Moves. Hey, y'all. Ah, shoot. I just remembered that somebody asked me for something and I forgot to give it to them. Well, darn me. Was it uh, something that was supposed to be done here as part of Smart Business Moves? Might be some kind of a surprise. Really? Hmm. Maybe. And I forgot to do my part. It would have been, right a, been, right been, been a surprise for me, I guess. <laughs> yep, maybe. <laughs> uh -uh. I'm writing this down. You get all the surprises, Tom. You already got all the hats. I know. I know. <sighs> Uh, All right. I got it. Okay. Uh, so what are we talking about today? You know what we're talking about. We're talking about KPIs today. Well, I, I just really wanted to ask you because right before we were coming on, you're like, I don't know what we're talking about today. Well, I don't know what else we're talking about. What else can we talk about? Anything happening in the... In the uh, COVID world or PPP or employee retention tax credit, any uh, any late breaking development stuff going on there? I'm trying to think if I have heard anything. I haven't heard anything that is, oh, I did actually hear one thing. I was advised to go in and um, anybody that's had COVID uh, to go in and get a blood test and something else. Let me see what it was. Mm, because of the, you know, the blood clots that are popping up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go in and get your lungs checked. Um, have, an X, have an lungs x-ray and get um, blood work done. Okay. Okay. Well, that's. Are you making, so that's what they're, they're advising people who've had COVID. Yeah. Exactly. I guess that's good. Good advice. Yeah, there's all kinds of uh, unintended consequences after mm -hmm. getting through the initial bout that uh, can pop up, strokes and things like that. Just, yeah. just weird stuff. And definitely lingering. There are lingering. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, things wrong. There are lingering things happening, right? That that hurt and uh, cause trouble afterwards. So that are minor in comparison, but symptoms. Huh, that's the word. Symptoms. There you go. Sometimes it seems like English is not my first language, but <laughs> it actually is. It's, it's as good as it gets, isn't it? That's it. <laughs> hmm. you, know, you know a little bit of Korean, though. I know a little Korean. I know a little French. I know a little German. I know a modicum of Spanish. Um, so I, I actually think that might mess me up. All these like disparate, disparate languages out there. You know why English is such a struggle? Because you've got so many other things floating around. That's in there. right. It's like, what is that word? No, that's not the English word for it. I'm, I'm going to go with that, Tom. That's what I'm going with. Debbie's asking a question here that we might be able to help her with. She wants to know uh, when can you ask for your PPP loan to be forgiven? I assume that you're talking about your first PPP loan because it would be too early for your second. If you, you know, you've gotten the monies, you wouldn't have an opportunity to have spent them all on the things that it's intended to be spended for on in order to, to be forgiven. So for your first one, you have up to 10 months, as I understand it, after you received the loan to ask for forgiveness. So I don't know, say you got the loan May 1st of 2020. I think that you've got up to the beginning of March or the end of February, the end of this month, I guess, would be 10 months, wouldn't it? Well, if they got it in, no, if they got it in May 1st, May. Yeah, so that's the fifth month, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because... So that'd be the end of March. Yeah. So not this month, next month. End of March. They yeah. still have... Well, no, because they get to the end of April. That's 12. So it would be the, you know, 
May, March would be month 10 and April would be month 11. So right now it'd be 13. You're right. So month 12 would be April. And month. you're the math guy. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm testing you. I want to make sure you're, 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 you're paying attention. Whatever. Look, Liz, Liz passed. <laughs> so, you know, now's a good time. You know, if you've gone ahead and you have um, met, you know, the requirements, and I guess you would have because the money's would have had to have been spent by the end of 2020, right? For the for the first round yeah. in order to, to get into the forgiveness window. Yeah. You certainly want to make sure you get it uh, done before you've used up your 10 months from, from when you receive the funds. Because at that point, I think it's too late. You know, there, there are going to be some people that are going to mess up and there's going to be a whole big thing. But you just don't want to be part of that group, Debbie. <laughs> just just do it within the 10 months and, and save yourself a bunch of grief and hassle. They were recommending, you know, as, as soon as maybe a month ago to wait just a little bit longer until the new president was put in place and um, end of the year came, see what else was coming along. But uh, the information that we're hearing now is, yeah, it's okay. We're, there aren't gonna be a whole lot more benefits coming down the pipe here. They got that nice short form, so. Yeah, if you if you uh, received less than one hundred fifty thousand, I understand it's really a breeze to 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 fill out. Yeah, this is awesome! Yay! Write this down. I'm writing myself all these notes today. Okay. I've been abusing my journal, so. Trying to, trying to handle it correctly like a big girl. Yay, Liz. Yeah. It's so much to keep up with, isn't it? Oh, my gosh, right? Somebody was recommending to me, because I like to read a lot, and sometimes I struggle finding different things that I want. They said, yeah, you should get into podcasts and start, start, listening to podcasts and I just started to look at like, yeah, that's a good idea. An hour of my day was gone. It was like, Oh, what happened right there? <laughs> I just lost an hour and I hadn't listened to any podcast. I had just looked at who makes them and how you do it and all that good stuff. So yeah, yeah. Time can fly. You want to get to work? I do. Okay, let's do we're that. Doing it fast today. Look at we're getting to work at two oh eight, Tom, or five oh eight in your world. Um, I'm proud of us. Well, we got a lot of work to do. Um, uh, we're talking about improving productivity, and the productivity uh, again being uh, defined as allowed time divided by actual time. And we want to improve productivity because if we improve productivity, that is going to help us lower our uh, loaded direct payroll to revenue. And okay. we want to lower Robin, that. Robin's sucking up over here, Tom. KPIs are fine. Yeah. He's, he's kissing up. Good job, Robin. Robin. I don't know if you were on, I don't know you, if you're on yesterday, Robin, but Tom did show that he posted the timelines for retention. He posted it specifically for you we just forgot he forgot to tell anybody that yeah, he did. Out there for a week and i forgot about it but if you go to smart business i mean cleaning business today forward slash smart smb resources here i'll drop the link in chat you go to that link this uh first one here you can click on it and you'll download that uh um, document that, that that liz had with the reasons that people leave oh did he slipped right in there between your your little links there. Hey, Denise. Okay. So at this point, we all appreciate why we want to lower loaded direct payroll to revenue because that gets our cost of goods sold down, which gives us more money to play with after we, 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 we pay our cleaning technicians. And we want to do that by not necessarily paying them less, but helping them to produce more, to be more effective, to be more productive, hence productivity. So we can pay, you know, a great wage, but still have 
uh, a small cost of goods sold. And a cornerstone of that is going to be training. We talked about training in terms of, you know, you got to look at somebody's talent level as well as their skill level. And talent is kind of the God given, you know, attributes that, uh, that they came to the job with, you know, how fast they are, how strong they are, things that arguably you really don't have a, you know, I guess you can even improve talent, but it, I mean, that's a, that's a heavier lift. And as an employer, that's usually outside of our realm of, 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 of jurisdiction, but the skill part in terms of being able to use the talent you have in a way to get the most out of it. And Liz, you had an example of that yesterday with a technician who was relatively slow. And so guess, slow, Tom. Yeah. Not relatively slow. So slow. Sloth slow. But what was the, what was, how did, how did she learn to, you know, clean at a, at a reasonable rate where her productivity was, was, you know, at least acceptable? Yeah, her productivity ended up being over 100%. Uh, and she used, um, so just some basic systems. She learned how to do things. Well, methods is actually what you have on here, Tom. Uh, she learned methods for increasing her speed while still moving her body very slowly. So she never did really speed up her body intentionally. She never felt like she was going faster, speeding up, but just the repetition of doing these new these new processes and cleaning in these different ways, South Africa, hmm. um, uh, doing them repetitively, she, she automatically got faster, but she still always maintained a very, very steady, calm demeanor when she cleaned. And she appeared to be cleaning very, very slowly. She wasn't but she appeared to be cleaning very slowly. She was just exceptional at doing things like when you would wipe something in a hand with and your next one, a lot of times people just keep going over things, you know, and wiping, 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 wiping. She was just exceptional at one hand width and then uh, over, up an entire hand width, over, down an entire hand width. She was just, and she knew how to, she used her hand exactly right to capture, spin, capture, spin, capture. So she really just, she perfected uh, cleaning, cleaning technique, the, the hand movements and also the, the foot movements. She focused a lot on not moving her feet. Again, she didn't want to move a lot. And so she didn't. She, um, She's the one that really helped us to clean in slices, a term that we got from Joanna Douglas. Um, just cleaning in a slice. You stand in one area, you clean this area, and then you move to the next slice. And she was ridiculous. Ridiculously. But boy, if you saw her, you'd be thinking she was slow. So... In this whole area of methods, there's this general concept of economy of motion where, mm -hmm. you know, there's a difference between motion and movement. You know, it's so like, you know, there's sayings, things like, you know, the shortest, you know, distance between point two points is a straight line that you want to be teaching techniques that allow your cleaning professionals to get as much movement with as less motion as possible. And there's, I guess. So explain that, Tom. What do you mean by that? How do you get the most movement with as little motion as possible? Because I think a lot of people confuse those two words. Right. Um, you've ever watched somebody clean that isn't very effective and they might, be on one corner of the room doing something for a little bit and they run all the way over to the corner of the room and they do something and they go somewhere else and do something. And there isn't a system in place. Whereas if somebody has a system in place and, you know, there's a lot of different ways to put a system together, but they're all should be designed in a way to minimize the, 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 the movement 
or excuse me, the motion involved to actually get the work done that, that, that you want to dirt get done. For instance, top to bottom, left to right is, is something that, that, that oftentimes is said where you might start at the doorway of a room and start at the top and work your way around the room from left to right, top to bottom. Back to front. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and the thinking between top to bottom is you got this thing called gravity that if you start at the bottom and work your way to the top, then if you're knocking dirt down, then the stuff at the bottom that you already cleaned might get dirty again. I don't know, Liz. Do you do you buy that? I, I, I do, Tom, uh, especially with um, maybe areas that have not been cleaned as often as as like um, recurring cleaning, you know, as, as often as we might be cleaning in our our businesses. So I think a lot of people have seen that with first time in cleanings or uh, with homes that have just really got like single cleanings where there's a lot of buildup. Even when you are really working hard to capture all of the dirt and dust, uh, a lot of it still does go into the air and then settles. And then as it settles, you you begin to see, I'm sure most of you have been in a situation where you have seen the thing cleaned, you or you've cleaned it yourself, you know it was done. The customer calls and says it's dirty, doesn't even look like it's been dusted. You look at it yourself and you're like, what the heck? It is dusty. <laughs> I'm the one that cleaned it. So that that absolutely can happen. The um, dust, et cetera, can get into the air and it does settle. So the smarter move for me is start at the top, work your way down. What's this? Tharbleg? You ever heard of the word? No. Is this what it is? Hey, come on, Lynn. You have I to. Know. I swear. Not in any language, Tom. <laughs> okay. Um, I swear that this, this, this is not me. Not, no. This isn't the first time that, that 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 we've talked about. Maybe on smart business moves, but over the well, I don't know. We don't really do this in foundations, do we? So no. maybe well, we should. Time. Okay. Um, you ever see the movie Cheaper by the Dozen? Frank and Lily and Gilbreth. Yes. Okay, and they're kind of like efficiency freaks trying yep. to. They have all okay. those kids. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a, I mean, I don't know. The, the movie's based on, on real people. There really is a Frank and Lily, or was a Frank and Lily and Gilbreth. Okay. And wow. One of the things that they came up with is Therablegs. And there's basically, they're, they're, they're the basic motion elements. And any work that's done is done with a combination of these motions or these activities, search, find, select, grasp, hold, transport, loaded, transport, empty, kind of, kind of get the point. Now, yeah. Any work activity can be defined by putting these together in various combinations of, of what's being done. And I'll drop this link. Yeah, that's interesting. If anybody yeah. wants to know more about Therablegs. I'm totally wanting to look at this and, and check it out a little bit more. And out of those Therablegs, they define some of them as effective that actually are, you know, necessary in order to do work. And work, in our case, is yeah. clean something. And they've identified some of them that are ineffective. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you, you don't have them at all, that you, you know, that, that they're going to be completely eliminated. Mm -hmm. But these are the basic motion elements that you really want to focus on and figure out how many of them can you eliminate and how many of them can you reduce because they really aren't getting you the outcome that you're looking for. They're, they, 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 they represent potential wasted time. Okay. This makes sense to me. I like it. So like one of them here is search. If you're yeah. doing something, you have to search for something, you know, where's my, you know, whatever. Anything. You're wasting time. Absolutely. Whereas use is use. I mean, if there's a way that you can use it more quickly, that's great too, but you're actually cleaning something if you're using it. But if you're looking for that brush, if you're searching for that brush mm -hmm. or, uh, 
plan is another one where you're in a house and you're having to figure out, well, what am I going to do? What product do I use? What tool do I use? Where do I start? Who's cleaning what? Yeah. All well, those it, things. it doesn't mean that you're going to make 100% of the planning go away. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times with good methods, you can reduce the amount of time and there's less trying to figure stuff out and searching and certainly any type of delay is avoidable or, you know, unavoidable. Um, you want to want to get rid of. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I like all these rest hold. And What's position? Position. That is, I'm trying to figure out how it would work in cleaning. I don't know if it works in cleaning, but like if I am in a manufacturing process, you say I'm an assembly line and I've got yeah. a part, I want to be able to take that part and just put it right where it belongs rather than having yeah. to fiddle with it to get the threads lined up. And I gotcha. So that everything is in the right position. I think that this could could um, make sense too. For example, your if you have squirt bottles or spray bottles in a caddy that you would definitely want the handles all pointing in and when you go to grab them they're ready to go and they don't leak onto anything so i think position could although this says it's ineffective so maybe i've got that wrong well no you don't want to you want to reduce the amount of time that you're having to do that so, ah, so you want to put you it back do, well, in you position know, yeah so if you could come up with, with 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 methods to reduce the amount of time that you have to fiddle around with that yeah absolutely Oh, that, okay. I can actually think of a couple of examples for position then. Okay. So if you have That's a caddy, you know, make, have a designated spot where everything goes back in that exact same place. Yeah. Maybe using color coded spray tops and labels and various things. So at a glance, you aren't searching for the window cleaner because you know exactly where it is in the caddy and you know what color it is. Maybe better yet, you're wearing an apron, and an apron has the ability to carry a couple of models on you. So where you are having to um, walk, and you know you can you can you can say arguably that search walking is a is a form of of of, of searching. Walking is a really big waste of time. It's one yeah. of the things that you want to reduce. Between select and search, walking, I forget what it is. It's been a while since I've, I've, I've done this professionally, but walking falls under this ineffective side. So the fewer steps you can take to clean a room or a house, the more productive you're going to be. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody that's ever timed this, tested this, knows that this is true. The, the amount of steps that you're taking really, really impacts productivity. It's interesting that they have um, inspect on here. I understand why it's on there, but it's interesting because I think that a lot of people would not think of it as being ineffective, right? They might be thinking of it in a different way. Well, if you're having, the, the less time you have to spend inspecting, the more productive you're going to be. Yeah, do it right the first time so that yeah. no inspection is needed. Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't mean that it, it, it has to go, that it should go away completely. But if you've got a really bad process where you're having to inspect, and again, if you go back to like a manufacturing process where there's multiple steps on, a, on, a, on an assembly line, if you're having to do like heavy inspections on, on, on every point, you know, you've got some pretty some pretty serious quality issues if that's necessary. And I would say that that's true in our business as well. If you find inspections a necessary part of, of um, the process to be able to maintain the quality levels that you need, that there's probably some other stuff that you can do instead that's not ineffective or less less ineffective, more effective. What more do we want to say about training? I mean, the whole verbally thing is cool in the methods, but there's so much. I mean, there's so much more there than 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 just the 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 methods part of the training. 
well, um, so I guess part of the training and increasing productivity should be talking a little bit about uh, repetition, maybe, um, and just the, the practice that people get so that they have more time to do the stuff that needs to be done. Uh, because repetition does, does, you know, speed things up. What do you got going on there, Tom? Green and um, red numbers. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get my desktop organized. Oh. <laughs> so when you say repetition, just the, the general practice, it's like practicing any activity. You can yeah. Yeah. learn to build your speed up. Yeah, the more you do it, the faster you get. Uh, it's why they don't recommend that you, um, oh gosh, brain is struggling. Language skills are lacking today. Uh, why you don't jump from thing to thing to thing and instead do one activity because the more you do it in, in a row without a break, then the faster you will get at it. So they they really recommend that you not, you know, a lot of people think that they're really good at jumping from task to task to task and back again and being able to do that. But there are a lot of studies that show that's nowhere near as productive. Um, it takes time for your brain to shift. It takes time for your body to shift. It takes time for everything to shift. So that uh, the repetition, I think, is really, really important. And something that goes along with the training, mm -hmm. I mean, the technician is, 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 is part of the whole productivity answer, if you will, but the tools you provide your technician oh. and the cleaning products, the cleaning agents you use, all of those are part of the equation as well. Absolutely. I can be a really excellent cleaning technician, but if I've got really crappy tools and really lousy cleaning agents, I'm not going to be nearly as productive, right? Absolutely. Yep. And that's why uh, your cleaning professionals get so, or my cleaning professionals get frustrated, irritated, upset if they don't have the correct tools. If for whatever reason they didn't get and, you know, a, enough cloths for the day. And now they're, they're having to, you know, manage their, the amount of towels that they have. So uh, tools are a really big deal. Uh, whoa, all of it. And, and the supplies, the equipment for productivity. Absolutely. I'm thinking of so many things. Like, I, like my brain's like, so fast that I'm having a hard time talking. Like long cords on your vacuum cleaner and um, spray bottles that actually spray or squirt bottles that are even faster than spray bottles or just so many different things. Yeah. Aprons, long cords. I can tell you, I mean, there's a lot of material out here on this and the whole idea of like speed cleaning, Jeff Campbell wrote the book on it. Debbie partnered with him a number of years ago and Debbie's carrying it on and she still promotes speed cleaning. Speed cleaning's got a lot of the principles we're talking about here um, in terms of reducing steps and, you know, wearing aprons and using long cords. Um, and I guess, we learned the other day that Jeff Campbell was an industrial engineer. I guess I yeah. kind of knew that, but uh, you know, I think that's uh, that certainly makes sense, and that's awesome. Um, Sharon Tinberg is another person that really does a good job with training technicians how to be productive. Very good. She puts a ton of focus and uh, on that whole idea and just stays at it. And, and that's really why she's such a large proponent of aprons, not because she thinks people look good in aprons, not because she wants it done her way, but because it is so much more productive. Um, there's Sport bottles versus spray bottles. That's a huge one too. It's also great for 
to reduce repetitive injury. The actual wipers or towels you use, and I'm not going to say rags because we don't clean with rags. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, type of vacuum cleaner you use can make a difference. How does how, how does that um, matter, Tom? Aren't all vacuum cleaners, don't they all pretty much do the same kind of job? Um, we've actually done some studies and actually there's some videos on the made, excuse me, on the modern cleaning website that back CC helped us with that where we basically put a clock on cleaning rooms using various types of vacuum cleaners like backpacks versus uh, uprights versus canisters. And there's pros and cons to all of that. But the larger space you're doing, the more productive you can be with, say, a backpack vacuum. Mm -hmm. but then it starts getting into all kinds of nuances in terms of how big the power head is, for instance. You know, is it a 12 inch versus a 14 inch? Yep. Um, here's a, a resource that if anybody really wants to get nerdy on this might find useful. This is uh, from ISSA. It's uh, 612 cleaning times. And these are like synthetic standards where if you want to know how long does it take to clean, to vacuum a thousand square feet of carpet, there's a lot of caveats to that. You know, mm -hmm. it, is it, is it, is it, is it yeah. type, of, type of carpet and how densely furnished is that space? Is there a lot of stuff that you're needing to move around or is it open space? And they also get into the type of equipment you're using. Are you using an upright or a backpack or a canister? And do you have a power head or do you have a nozzle? And is it, 10 inches, 12 inches, 14 inches, and all of that affects how long it takes to clean. That's awesome. And um, yeah, it um, it's a fun read if you're into stuff yeah. like that. It does sound fun to me. Gosh, look at this, uh, Robin, more fun right here. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what? I haven't looked at this in a while. You know, I've got this and it's, it's a, I guess they still do it on a, is it a download or is it a DVD? I, you know, I have it on a on a disc on a DVD. Oh, this is a, it's in a it's in a booklet. Open. Order your copy of the Times. Yeah. And you see where it says it used to be 540 times, but now it's 612. Nice. They're and the adding. I have is 400 and some, so they keep adding <laughs> to it. So now you have your nighttime reading there, Tom. Yeah, I've got to upgrade. Yeah, you upgrade. got a couple That's hundred more. times to check out. Uh, Robin was saying that he does use a speed cleaning method as well. Uh, I really think that uh, using the speed cleaning method, even if you don't use all of it, you need to use some of the basic tenets from the speed cleaning method. Yeah because it, it is just so commonsensical mm -hmm. and so helpful for making people, for helping people to be more productive. Yeah, and, and actually, I guess that that's a piece of it as well. When you want people to be more productive, you can't make them more productive. You can help them to be more productive by providing the correct training, tools, equipment, and the correct mindset. Um, if, but if they don't want to be productive, there isn't a lot that you can do except provide the great stuff and give them the right mindset. And then there you go. I want to talk about the towels and the wipers just for, for a minute though, because it makes a difference. We've done a lot of studies with this too. And um, not all microfiber is the same. And a lot of times we look at all of these tools from a commodity perspective that 
you know, if I can get vacuum A or vacuum B or vacuum C or towel A, B, C, whatever, you know, how much does it cost? What is my upfront cost in terms of, of what am I going to have to reach in my pocket and pay for it? And for just about every tool that's up here, that's not the real cost you need to be worried about. The real cost is how long is it going to take my cleaning professionals to get the job done using this tool? Because some towels clean better than others. Certainly some cleaning agents, chemicals clean better, more uh, more quickly than others. And if you can get the right combinations of wipers and chemicals and your whole tool suite together engineered with productivity in mind, the first question you need to, to ask is how much time can this tool save us or this product, this cleaning agent, whatever. And once you figure that out, then ask, well, what do I have to pay for it? But we're living in a world now where minimum wage is quickly becoming a 15 hour, a dollar, a dollar per hour thing. And we're going to have to be paying more than that as, as you know, cleaning companies. There's going to be easier work out there for $15 an hour. Yeah. And, you know, what's, you know, fully loaded, you're probably going to be pushing, you know, 20 bucks, you know, an hour so. At that point, every three minutes is costing you a buck, right? So what, is, what does that mean? You know, if I can save myself, you know, five minutes over the course of a week by using towel A versus towel B, then it really doesn't really matter how much towel A costs. It's cheaper from an overall cost standpoint than the more, you know, value brand, you know, price. Yep, that less expensive one. Using the client's vacuums, we use a shark and the bag was upright, light for clean, professional use and effective. A lot of people love the different shark models. They're very, very popular. So, and I'm I not gonna, somebody drug me down a rabbit hole today and we wound up looking at those. There's a bazillion shark vacuums out there, aren't there? Yes, there are so many different models. And there, but there are probably five or six really popular ones for our industry, though, that I've heard over and over again. Color coding towel system. Yep, that's that's good too. Color coding towel system absolutely can improve productivity. Yep, there are just so many things uh, that that you can do in in training, especially to and in just in your systems to improve productivity. Uh, yeah. So, um, but it's microfiber, not microfiber is kind of the norm now, you know, Liz, you know, I don't know if you can remember back that far when microfiber wasn't even a thing. Everybody cleaned with something cotton, cotton. right? Cotton. Absolutely. And there, you know, a lot of people, well, a lot of people still to this day don't like microfiber because once it start, stops working real well, it, you know, it feels like it pushes the dirt around it. And it does unless it's wet, right? Uh, so it's, you've got to have high quality microfiber. And so if you're buying low quality microfiber, you're finding that it's not working for really, really quickly. It seems like, ah, oh, this stuff just doesn't work. And so there are quite a few companies still that are cleaning with huck towels or what did I hear the other day? I heard another something. Uh, maybe it was cheesecloth, uh, but, but cotton because they don't, they don't feel that microfiber works. And that problem with microfiber is again, got to have high quality microfiber or it does break down too quickly and then it doesn't it doesn't do its job good sources for microfibers uh good sources for microfibers tom uh, microfiber wholesale and there's a couple of advertisers that are on cleaning business today uh microfiber wholesale is one of them and there's another one as well microfiber direct maybe Kick, kick around um, cleaning business today. You can see some links there. Um, there's another company out of Chicago called Perfect Clean that um, they make a, a, a really quality product as well. Um, 
again, I would, would encourage us for this equipment not to be thinking this is commodity purchase. Oftentimes we do. It's like, you know, when I'm buying gasoline, I'll go across the street to get, you know, gas, you know, two cents, you know, a gallon cheaper because that is a commodity. My car doesn't know the difference, but don't be buying these tools based on price. Buy them based on performance. And once you figure out what performs the best, then ask how much does it cost? Thanks, Amelia. Direct mop sales. That's another one, Robin. They yeah. have good microfiber. Yeah, I think you can find them on Cleaning Business Today. Yeah, you can. You can. Let's try to let's try to move on a little bit. Is there anything okay. more that we want to say about uh, equipment? I guess the only other thing that I have to say is any piece of equipment, any tool that you have, any supplies that you have, all should be looked at under this this microscope of productivity. So can I be more productive with this thing than another thing? So because if you can, you're going to, it's going to cost you less in the long run. If you can be more productive, you will be saving money in the long run. Let's talk about uh, performance pay. And there's two primary ways. I guess there's, there's, there's three. I'll just go ahead and list them. We all know about commission or sometimes that's called fee split. Or what's the other one? Job ticket hour. Or yeah. yeah, job ticket hour is a second one. Then, or which is basically being paid based on. Um, we'll go back and explain what all these are. Yeah, a lot of times. And um, we got a third called split hourly. Then you are going to have to add bonus, bonus. Okay. You can do that. That would that would count. No. Yep. That would definitely count. If you guys know of another um, method of performance pay, another type of performance pay, drop it in comments for me. These are these are the four that immediately pop up for me. All right. So let's let's kind of do these out of order. Okay. Split hourly is a type of pay where when your cleaning technicians are punched into a job or are on a job actually cleaning a home, they're being paid a hourly rate that's higher than the hourly rate they would get when they are between jobs, like driving between jobs. So mm -hmm. an example of this might be you might pay your technicians $12 an hour when they're actually clocked into a job cleaning it and $8 uh, dollars an hour when they're driving from job to job. That would be an example of that. Yep. And go ahead. No, I was agreeing. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is a, it's a performance pay. It has more, that particular type of pay has more effect on, efficiency than it does productivity and we haven't gotten to efficiency yet so we'll, we'll we'll cover that tomorrow but just 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 so you know that's uh that's part of the consideration um let's talk about bonus for a minute how are bonuses used liz to encourage people to be more productive so a lot of times people will our companies will give bonuses for uh, people who meet time goals or meet meet whatever time frames they're supposed to be cleaning in. So they'll get additional pay per hour, or they'll get a bonus at the end of the month, or at the end of the week, or whatever. They'll they'll get paid more when they when they are more productive. So they'll just get paid more money. So sort of uh, the idea of like that you shared yesterday, Tom. Uh, if you have a more productive employee, you can afford to pay them more. And so that's how this bonus system will work with people. I've seen, I've seen people do that with like, uh, the one, you know, I'll mention 
Kathy Gage. I don't know if any of you guys know Kathy, but she came up with a lot of innovative things in the area of uh, residential cleaning in terms of how to manage uh, the, the financial side and manage productivity. Um, she invented the master schedule. If, 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 if you guys are familiar with, 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 with that concept of a uh, way to put together a calendar to do your, your you know, easily scheduled like weekly and every other week and every four week jobs, but she had a pay system and I'm doing this from memory and, and Liz, if I'm, if I'm getting this wrong, straight me out that her own cleaning technicians were responsible for calculating their uh, revenue per labor hour. And they had a goal and if they were able to hit that goal, then they would get a bonus. Yep. She sure did. Yep. That's exactly what she did. But when they hit that goal, then basically their new goal became whatever the higher number was. So it was constantly driving them to generate more revenue per labor hour, which really is, 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 is you have to be more productive to do that. Yep. And she did, she didn't change the um, payroll percent to revenue number often. She just um, kept it out there all the time. You know, we need to be hitting this number. And I don't remember what she was hitting in those days, but it was um, it, every week, every week, every house, actually every day. Well, they did it. And, 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 I think what she was actually having them measure was their revenue per job hour, which is a little bit different. If they, you know, clean a $150 home and it took them three uh, labor hours to do it, that would be $50 uh, per labor hour, per, per, per job hour. Does that ring a bell? No, what rings a bell for me is the payroll percent revenue. That would so, be kind of tough for a cleaning technician to figure out because they wouldn't even know what their pay was. But they could very easily calculate why, that. Why didn't they know what their pay was? They all knew what they were getting paid. They would do it at the end of the day. I right. Know. And they knew how many hours they worked. So what I remember is they knew what they got paid. They knew how many hours that they worked. So they had their total pay. And then that that's what they used it for. There's a direct correlation between revenue per job hour and your loaded direct payroll to revenue. So we saw that yesterday. The higher your revenue per job hour is, the lower your lowered your loaded direct payroll to revenue is. So you could do it either way, I guess. It's just a function of, you know, who, what, what data you have available at the end of the day and who can, you know, what your employees find more easy to calculate. But they come in every day with a, with a calculator and kind of crunch numbers, right? Yep. At the end of every single day. Yep. That's what they did. And that's I got kind that of idea from her. And there's a couple other things that we haven't gotten here yet in terms of expectations and accountability. So that kind of fits that model, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's talk about commission pay and job ticket hours. Let's talk about job ticket hour. Um, that's when you pay even a higher hourly rate per the amount of labor hours that you estimate it's you think it's going to take to, to, to clean the house. Um, how you calculate that, I guess, I don't know. Do we, do we, do we, do we care how you would go about figuring out what you would want to, how you'd want to pay? Um, what, what, what do you mean, Tom? The question is, well, how much do you pay per hour if you're doing job ticket hour? Do, do we do we care at this point or do we just want to leave it to say that it's a higher hourly rate? You might. I'm thinking yeah. everybody on here always wants to know what are the benchmarks, what are the standards, what are the averages? So if you have something, I think that's going to be great. Well, I was kind of pulled into this discussion today too. And <laughs> if you're doing job ticket hour, don't worry about any of this mess over here. We don't need that. Um, dink. Um, but 
say you want to pay $95 an hour, and, excuse me, $15 an hour, that's your target, that's your target rate. Yeah. And say you've got an efficiency, and we haven't gotten to this yet, so this might make more sense tomorrow. An efficiency, if you remember, is being defined as the time that, time. Yeah, the time that we're actually on a job, clocked into a job, divided by our total clock time, which includes is job time plus driving and meeting time or whatever. Um, so when you plug in your efficiency, you're basically taking into account the non-productive time. So if 15 is your target, then the formula is pretty simple. You take what your target is, divide it by your, 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 your company efficiency, and it gives you the hourly pay that you should do while somebody is, you know, based on the allowed time of the job. Or they're cleaning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if you want to do job ticket hour and you want people to somebody to make $15 an hour and on the average the efficiency is 80%, then you'd pay them $18.75 while they are, you know, not even while they're on the job. That would be applied to the allowed hours for the job. So how that usually works is, so if you had eighteen seventy five, was the the job ticket hour. Usually, what they do is they apply a, an amount to the house. So they will say, "I'm going to use twenty dollars because it's easier for me." So three hour house, we pay twenty dollars an hour. So we're going to pay sixty dollars job ticket hour. So we're going to pay sixty dollars for you to clean this house. So if you get it done in two hours, great. You just now made 30 bucks an hour. So that's sort of the incentive for job ticket hour is, and, and it's a, a lot of people think it's easy on the company as well because they just say how much they're paying per house. So Mrs. Johnson's house pays you such and such amount of money. And Mrs. Smith's house pays you a different amount of money. The other performance pay that we're going to talk about is commission, which is just a percentage of the revenue that's generated. And a lot of people want to know, well, gee, how do I figure out what percentage is to pay my people? And that's kind of straightforward to figure out as well. If you have a couple of basic KPIs, you got to figure out what your target hourly pay is. You need to know what your efficiency is just the way that you did over on the job ticket hour, but you also need to know what your average revenue per job is. So in this example, we want to pay $15 an hour for clock time. Um, if you have uh, an average revenue per, per labor hour or, or job hour, same thing of $50 and an efficiency of 75%, then if it's a one person team, then you'd pay 40%. Per, per person. And basically if you got two people on the average, you pay 20% or three or four, it would be prorated that way. The formula is, let me see if I can actually show this in a way that would be. Do um, you have this link somewhere or this is just on your desktop? It looks like maybe an Excel or something. Yeah, it is. And this is out there for, for downloads somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Would it be helpful if I put this in cleaning business today? Yep. People would love that. I promise you. But aren't a bunch of these calculators are, I think, on YouTube, maybe? Yeah. I don't know if there's a – I did this for a more for Made Service Success Summit. This is this is part of that. So uh, this isn't uh, – I don't have a KPI video on this. I've got like a 40-minute video on this that I gave to a more that's out there that – have a link to I could, could could share as well if somebody wants forty minutes of what to do with this spreadsheet. Um, but um, basically, what we're doing is we're taking the fifteen dollars an hour and we're dividing it by this uh, fifty dollars times point seven five. That point seven five basically is taking the fifty dollars an hour you're making while somebody's uh, clocked into a job, you multiply it times 0.75. That's the average revenue that somebody is generating while they're on the clock. So over an eight hour day, if they work an average of eight hours, 50 times 0.75, whatever that is, would be 
the average revenue per clock hour as opposed to job hour. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, everybody? I talk with people a lot about this a lot. So I, I get it fairly easily, but I know that it's a, a new concept for a lot of people. So I'm curious, the people that are on today, I'm not, I can't remember who else on. I know Denise on, Robin's on, Debbie's on, Sam's on. Okay, Sam makes sense to you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So if I'm making an average of $50, generating $50 per hour for the time that somebody's actually clocked into a job, and if the average company efficiency is 75%, then $50 times 75% comes out to be 37.50. This is the average uh, revenue that's generated per clock hour. So that's including drive time and everything. So does this make sense to you, Linda? I see Linda's on here too. Um, I do have a question, Tom. So how do people, are we going to be talking about how they figure out their average efficiency factor or? Yeah. Efficiency is coming yeah. tomorrow. Okay. So efficiency tomorrow, tomorrow y'all, if you don't know what this tomorrow number is. Tomorrow is the big efficiency day. Okay. And efficiency is a wonderful number. You can do a lot of cool things with it. Productivity is an important number too. But in the few minutes we have left, let's just talk about how these performance pay systems can increase productivity. Basically, all of them are giving people incentive. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that back. Arguably, the split hourly is, is more of an efficiency thing than it is a productivity thing. So I am gonna draw a line through that. I, I would argue that split hourly doesn't really motivate somebody to clean a house faster because they're making more money while they're cleaning a home. What it does motivate them to do is not to goof off between jobs. Unless Tom, the only time I can think that it might work is I know that some people pay more money for, um, they have split hourly for deep clean versus recurring clean or initial cleans. So that people will speed up during those cleanings. More or that they pay less. I'm sorry, they pay less so that people will speed up during those cleanings because they can tend to take a long time. Okay. So it's the only time I can think of that. Might work. Oh, wait. God, I've been doing this for a while. I've never heard of that. You haven't? No, because it's I harder work. It's a lot harder work than maintenance cleaning. So I'm told, hell, I don't know. I've never cleaned a home, but that's what I've been told. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So that that's, that's a thing. not true. I have, but you know. I, I personally have never seen you clean anything, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I've never given this thing much thought. I pay percentage commission only total per house. Yep. So um, total 44% per house. Okay. Hey, Sam's giving Made Central a plug. Thank you, Samantha. Right. Yeah, Made Central does make all this real easy. Yeah, it's true, especially efficiency, because it, it is tough to track. I used to pay commission, um, but people had a hard time understanding why they only got paid 45% of the job or what that equated to. So then I switched to by the job pay. I know the percentage calculation, but they know on a three-hour house, they get paid $60, and that equals to $20 per job ticket. Yep, that's what we were just talking about and clean that house. It's like if they see 45%, it's all they get. They wonder if I'm paying myself 55%. I'll still have a clue. You said I didn't clean the home. Okay, you're, you're, you're laughing, Pam, but I've never seen him clean anything. <laughs> I've seen him hold a cloth. Actually, that's not true. I've seen you clean walls, Tom, whiteboard walls. Getting the... Uh in the war room, cleaning the, yep. the, the board. In the I, war room. I have seen you really scrub up on the on the war room. That's for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, doggone it! We're out of time again. Yep. Sorry, Tom. We will. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more about how commission and job ticket hour, in particular, can be used to increase your productivity and what that means to your loaded direct uh, payroll to revenue. And then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go deep into um, efficiency tomorrow. Okay. Tom, uh, Sam wants to know if, yeah, 
you at it. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Uh, job ticket hour was uh, relatively new. I mean, it's been around for a while, but uh, um, Central. it's, I mean, well, Tomate Central actually we've been doing it for, for, for a while. We, we added that a while ago, but it was the last, it was the last pay type that, that we added. Oh, gotcha. Yep, rock and, and it does all the prorations for you. So if you got multiple people on a team or somebody gets there later, leaves early, it does all the arithmetic for you. So you don't, uh, you don't need a spreadsheet anymore. Yes. Thank you, Robin. That's it is, it is past top of the hour or right at it. See you tomorrow, y'all. Okay, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Expectations and accountability too. Tomorrow is a big day. We're going to start tying a lot of this together. So hope to see you then. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. -bye. Bye,